What's going on, wonderful people? This is Metacosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biology playlist. In the last video, we talked about the thyroid gland and the parathyroid gland. Today, we'll talk about the adrenal cortex. And in the subsequent video, we'll talk about the adrenal medulla. Where the flip is the cortex? It's the outer part. It's the crust of the gland. Okay, the cortex is outside. Where's the medulla? It's in the core of the gland. This lovely cortex is subdivided into three layers. Granulosa, fasciculata, reticularis. Please watch these videos in order. If you want the PhD stuff, check out my endocrinology playlist. Now we're sick and tired of this story. We have CEO, general manager, employees, independent contractors. Who are the ones that listen to the general manager? Only the employees. How about the adrenal gland? Well, the adrenal cortex is one of the employees. However, the adrenal medulla is one of the independent contractors. Translation, the pituitary can give orders to the adrenal cortex, but there is no relationship whatsoever between the pituitary and the adrenal medulla. What kind of order? The pituitary is gonna secrete ACTH. This ACTH will go to the adrenal cortex to tell the adrenal cortex to secrete its hormones. So let's go back to square one. Hypothalamus will secrete corticotropin releasing hormone or CRH. Who's the corticotropin? That's the ACTH. Okay. Corticotropin releasing hormone is gonna go to the anterior pituitary to tell her to secrete that corticotropin. What's the corticotropin? ACTH. What does that stand for? Adreno, because it goes to the adrenal. Cortico, because it goes to the cortex of the adrenal. Tropic, because it makes it grow and multiply and blush and flush. And hormone, because it's a hormone. When the adrenal cortex sees the ACTH, it's gonna secrete its hormones. Do you remember that most of your hormones come from the anterior pituitary? Only two are released from the posterior. And these two are ADH and oxytocin. Who made them? The hypothalamus. The posterior does not make anything. It just stores these two hormones and then later dumps them into the bloodstream. ADH and oxytocin are released from the hypothalamus because this is closer to your diencephalon, the area in your brain that's related to memory, like the limbic system, for example. Oxytocin helps you forget. ADH helps you remember. Oxytocin, this is childbirth. If each lady remembers the pain of childbirth, she will never get pregnant again and humanity will go extinct. But thanks to oxytocin, she's gonna forget and get pregnant again to maintain the population replacement rate at 2.1% or more. ADH helps you remember because you were distracted while crossing the street. You got hit by a car, you started bleeding. Your blood pressure started dropping. ADH will try to come and save the day by retaining water and it will try to raise your blood pressure as much as it could. Do you think this is something that you should forget? Heck no, you should remember it to learn from your stupid mistakes. As Friedrich A. Hayek once said, we shall not grow wiser until we realize that much of what we've done was foolish. He was talking about the ADH. Adrenal cortex, is it one of the employees or independent contractors? It's one of the employees. We're talking about the cortex and the cortex is made of three sub layers and each layer is called zona or zone. I'm in the zone. Zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, zona reticularis. Granulosa is the most superficial, reticularis is the deepest. There are many differences between the cortex and the medulla of the adrenal gland. The cortex secretes steroids. These are fat hormones. Medulla secretes catecholamines. These are proteins or peptides or water-soluble hormones. Lipid hormones are slow in action, but water-soluble hormones are fast in action. Lipid is basically cholesterol. And that's why these hormones will be called aldosterone. Why sterone? Because it came from cholesterol. And then we have cortisol. Why? It's a steroid. It came from cholesterol. And then we have DHEA, dihydroepiandrosterone. It's also a steroid. But the catecholamines came from an amino acid known as tyrosine. What's the stimulus for the cortex? Well, if you're talking about the zona glomerulosa, it secretes aldosterone. Here, the stimulus is something called the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, which we'll discuss soon. But if you're talking about the zona number two and number three, the fasciculata and the reticularis, they secrete 
cortisol and adrenal androgens respectively. In this regard, the stimulus is the ACTH, which comes from anterior pituitary, under the influence of CRH from the hypothalamus. But who is the stimulus of the adrenal medulla? Remember, I've told you before, the adrenal medulla treat her like a ganglion. Oh, right, what does that mean? It means that the adrenal medulla is a ganglion. It needs preganglionic sympathetic fibers to stimulate her. When the adrenal medulla gets stimulated, it's going to secrete catecholamines. What are the catecholamines? Epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine, or adrenaline, noradrenaline, dopamine. If your adrenal cortex is secreting too much aldosterone, this is called Kahn syndrome. If it's secreting too much cortisol, this is called Cushing syndrome. If it's not secreting anything, this is called Addison disease. But if your adrenal medulla is secreting too much epinephrine, norepinephrine, dopamine, this is called pheochromocytoma. What are the two layers of the adrenal gland cortex and medulla? What are the three sub-layers of the cortex? Zona glomerulosa, zona fasciculata, zona reticularis. Zona glomerulosa secretes aldosterone. Zona fasciculata secretes cortisol. Zona reticularis secretes adrenal androgens. Here's the zona glomerulosa. It secretes mineralocorticoids such as aldosterone. The zona fasciculata secretes glucocorticoids, such as cortisol. And then the zona reticularis secretes adrenal androgens. Okay, why did we call these mineralocorticoids? Because aldosterone is going to affect your minerals, such as your sodium, potassium. Oh, mineralo. Why did we call this glucocorticoids? Because cortisol is going to boost your blood glucose. Oh, Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. What does aldosterone do? It increases two things and it decreases two things. It reabsorbs sodium and water. It secretes potassium and hydrogen in the kidney. Hey kidney, keep my sodium and water, but dump my potassium and hydrogen. Okay, what does cortisol do? It's glucocorticoids. It will increase your glucose. And how do you increase my glucose? Well, I need some gluconeogenesis, right? Yeah. I also need some glycolysis, right? Yeah. I also need to break down those proteins, make them into amino acids, get some gluconeogenesis going to get you more glucose, right? Yeah. And the adrenal androgens are just androgens. Okay, here's a question for you. Why do you call the cortisol the anti-stress hormone? Oh, because it helps you counteract stress. What do you mean? Imagine that you woke up in the morning and you started driving your car. It's a stressful day. You are late for the job. You keep cussing at other drivers and they keep cussing back at you. This is a stressful situation. That's why you need cortisol in the morning because there is more stress in the morning. And this lovely cortisol is gonna make tons of glucose available at your command in the blood so that you can burn it to get energy so that you can keep cussing at those drivers. That's the bad boy you are. Oops, I was distracted. A car hit me. Now what happened? You will lose blood. And when you lose blood, you will lose volume. When you lose volume, you lose pressure. Blood pressure is gonna drop like a rock. Why is this bad? Of course it's bad. Less blood flow to your brain, called decreased cerebral perfusion, can give you a stroke. Less blood flow to your heart, called decreased cardiac perfusion, can give you a myocardial infarction. Heart attack. Thankfully, your body will try to help. Your body is gonna try to raise the blood pressure. How? First of all, when you lose blood, this is a stressful situation. Fight and flight, right? Sympathetic, based on stimulation. Kidney secretes renin. I love the name. I-N means protein. Protein that comes from the kidney. The kidney is the renal. So, renin, protein, comes from the renal. This renin is gonna convert angiotensinogen, which comes from the liver, into angiotensin 1. Why do you call it angiotensinogen? Because it will cause genesis of angiotensin. Well, no kidding. Take that angiotensin 1 and convert it into angiotensin 2. How? By an ACE. Angiotensin converting enzyme. Love it. Now angiotensin 2 has two functions. Function number one, vasoconstrictions of the arterioles. And when you vasoconstrict, you will increase your total peripheral resistance, also known as the systemic vascular resistance. When you increase the resistance, you will increase the blood pressure and back to normal. Awesome. Function number two of angiotensin II is to go to the zona glomerulosa of your adrenal cortex 
told her to secrete aldosterone. And what will aldosterone do? Increase two things and decrease two things. When I increase salt and water, what's going to happen? I'm going to retain volume and I'm going to increase your blood pressure and back to normal. This is what your body does. If you lost a moderate amount of blood, your body can help. You can make it. But if you lost tons of blood, unless you go to the hospital right now, your body can fail. This mechanism is awesome within limits. Please understand, aldosterone will help you reabsorb and retain salt and water, but antidiuretic hormone will help you reabsorb water only. Big difference. Zona glomerulosa mineralocorticoids, such as aldosterone to retain salt and water and to dump potassium and hydrogen. And then zona fasciculata, glucocorticoids, which are cortisol. Cortisol does what? Increases my glucose by breaking down glycogen into glucose called glycogenolysis or glycogenolysis and increases gluconeogenesis, which is making glucose from non-carbohydrate sources. Neo means new. I'm gonna make glucose from new sources, such as proteins. Androgens are just androgens. They increase your bone mass, they increase your muscle mass, they increase your red blood cells, they make your voice thicker, etc, etc. Here's a question for you. Does cortisol belong to the insulin land or to the glucagon land? Of course it is here. It's in glucagon stand because I've told you before, insulin alone is here. All the other hormones are over here, including Mr. Cortisol. Cortisol is catabolic. It breaks down stuff. It breaks down glycogen into glucose, for example. It breaks down proteins into amino acids. Insulin alone is here in insulin stain. All the other hormones are here in glucagon stain. And these include glucagon, cortisol, epinephrine, thyroxine, etc. What do you mean by catabolic? I mean you break down protein into amino acid, glycogen into glucose, triglycerides into free fatty acid. Break it down, baby, because I need energy, because other drivers are cussing at me, and I'm driving like a maniac, and this is stressful. Let's talk about this lovely cortex. Okay, when it comes to the zona glomerulosa, what does it secrete? Mineralocorticoids, such as what? Aldosterone. Thank you so much. When it comes to the zona fasciculata, what does it secrete? glucocorticoids such as cortisol okay when it comes to the zona reticularis what does it secrete adrenal androgen such as what dihydroepiandrosterone okay thank you now let's talk about the stimulus for each one what's the stimulus for aldosterone release remember the renin angiotensin aldosterone system yeah Renin is going to convert angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. And then ACE is going to convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 has two functions. To vasoconstrict and to secrete aldosterone. So angiotensin 2 is the actual stimulus here. But the stimulus for the zona fasciculata and reticularis is not angiotensin 2. It's the good old ACTH coming from the anterior pituitary. Thanks to CRH coming from your hypothalamus. If you like this video, you will adore my renal physiology course on my website, medicosisperfectionalist.com. And for a limited time, you can get 40% discount towards anything on my website. Just use discount code KIDNEY. In the next video, we'll talk about the adrenal medulla. And until then, please subscribe, hit the bell, click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my premium courses. Thanks for watching. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.